This is the Holy Gospel. It is according to St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Well, grace to you all and peace from God our Creator and from Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. So we've got a very common uh, text commonly read at funerals, John 14, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Some other translations read something akin to, um, in my father's um, mansion there are many rooms. Um, I think there's also other translations that go, in my father's kingdom there are many mansions. So what's that mean? What's that mean? Classical Lutheran question, what does this mean? How many out there um, in our, well, in Tyler, Minnesota, we're a little insulated. Most uh, everyone here um, identifies as some form uh, of the Christian faith. In Marshall, we have some other neighbors, um, some Muslims here and there. I was in Chicago for a while in which I got to be very good friends with some Jewish people. Got to know some rabbis very well. But even though we might be insulated here in Tyler, How many of you have wondered about other faiths and what to do with them? Good. Some hands went up. Put them down. Here's what I want you to do. Because this is one of those texts that I think speaks to that. In my father's house there are many rooms. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to someone who's reasonably friendly looking. Um, Hopefully they're not grimacing. And uh, go ahead... Um, talk to each other about what you think this says about other faiths. Go ahead. Okay, I'll call you all back. I'm hopeful because I didn't see any fists flying out there. I could probably ask more controversial questions. But I think our neighbors' faiths, those who don't share the same faith as we do, I think this text speaks exactly to that but in a different way. Now I have a story for you all. 
During college, um, I worked at, uh, I usually don't let this information out. I try to keep it secret. I worked at a moving company during the summers. See, when, when that word gets out, guess what people call you to do? Hey, Lyle, I'm moving. Can you help me? I suppose. But I worked at a moving company on and off, and then actually about a year after college, when I was looking for a job, I did too. And uh, loved the place. It was a wonderful family business to work for. Got to know all the employees really well and everything. And I'll never forget as, you know, I'm, I've already worked there a while. I, I know how things run. Um, I see things going. You know, I'm a part of, part of the machinery. And I was in the warehouse one day. And uh, even though it was a moving company, they did receive a lot of shipments in and out for different things. They, um, they were also a warehousing company, too. Um, and so they'd receive lots of shipments in and out, usually about 10 a day, I'd say, things coming in and out. And uh, uh, I was just there, and the warehouse guy was uh, across at another warehouse. Shipments were coming in, and I started pointing fingers to go, oh, well, you do this there, you do this there, you do this there, um, and taking charge in a way. Um, and the warehouse guy ends up coming over, and I say, oh, you know, well, hey, they came here. You know, I told them to load up to that dock, do that shipment. And I'm telling him I'm doing this finger pointing since he wasn't there. And I, I was helping him out so much that I knew he would just be ecstatic and thrilled that he had a competent employee um, telling how things were going to go. And I was shocked and amazed that the look on his face was not a smile. I had messed up a bunch of stuff because of previous day's work. Um, I think one shipment I had put in front of a loading dock in which something was supposed to go out in a couple hours. Um, and a couple other things very similar to that. And so the lesson I learned was, yeah, that wasn't my job. It wasn't. In regarding our neighbor's faith and who goes where and who's going to go upstairs and who's going to go downstairs and who gets to take the elevator to the top floor and in the terms of a house, who gets to go in the kitchen, who gets a bedroom, um, who has to stay in the basement, that's not our job. That's below our pay grade. It is. So in the midst, when we have neighbors who have different faiths, and it doesn't really matter what the faith is, it could be some Muslims we might know in Marshall. And I do know some. If you ever have a chance, make sure you eat at the Hindi store. Tell uh, Ahmed I sent you, and he'll prepare you a wonderful plate. Um, or if it's um, those who might profess to be an atheist. We have grandparents out there. Every grandparent has a grandson who's totally die hard on atheism right now. You do. It's in our DNA. Works that way. And we don't have too terribly many Jews around Tyler, Minnesota, but we do have some in Sioux Falls. Not too many folks have met Hindus. I worked with some in Chicago. Beautiful people. But when it comes to our neighbor's faith, who don't share the same faith as us, same belief system, same belief structure, it's not our job. It's not our job. All we know is God's kingdom has a lot of rooms in it. It's bigger than you and I can imagine. And to assign how big it is and who goes where, no. When we do that, I think we get that uh, grizzled look on the warehouse guy. His name was Cade, real great guy, still friends with him to this day. But that's what happens. So see.
see how I went around it in a different way. It's not our job. And that's where we mess up. Generally, in all throughout life, when we mess up is we're trying to take the place of God. It could be this, it could be neighbor's faiths, it could be anything in all of God's creation out there in the world. When we try to take the place of the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, that's when we get all a flutter and messed up. And this is one of those texts, I think, that speaks loudly to that. What's Thomas say? Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus had just gotten it done explaining to them that he's on his way to the cross. And Philip said to him, Lord, if you just show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. And what did Jesus just get done telling him? If you know me, you know the Father. You do know him and you have seen him. He's right here in front of you. So we mess up when we take that place of God, assign who's going where to which room and whatnot. That's how we mess up. And believe it or not, that is also the gospel. That's some saving work. To know that we're not the ones responsible for that should be a burden lifted off our shoulders. To know that that's a bigger job description than we have. That's some beautiful, wonderful, great news. Because what it allows us to do is to do our jobs. And what are they? Well, in the context of John's Gospel here, what is it? It's to see Jesus. To see who Jesus is. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? It's to look where Jesus is going. That self-giving love. And Philip said to him, Lord, if you show us the Father, we will be satisfied. That's our job. To look towards Christ, the center. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.